So when I was selling high-end coffee equipment at the roastery, I would often get people who were upgrading their coffee machines from one of those sunbeams or brevels that you normally see. One thing they don't realize is that there's a lot more pressure that comes out of the coffee machines I was selling. So there was, there was this one guy who I ran over the coffee, coffee machine you know, techniques with him and gave him a little bit of a play on it. So what this guy did was he grabbed his gr the group handle and the tamper and he spent about 30 seconds aggressively tamping the coffee in there. I almost felt sorry for the coffee in that in that basket. But it was I was gobsmacked. He he just kept on going at it. And I, I could have sworn he was about to push his whole handle through the bench and just destroy the the foundation of this coffee machine. Luckily, he didn't know. But when he put the group handle into the coffee machine, he was pleasantly surprised to see that no coffee was actually being extracted out. So today, I'm going to be going over tips to help you tamp properly. So the first thing I'm going to go over is the don'ts. One of the common things I see people doing is they'll grind their coffee, and then while holding it up, they'll tamp it really lazily. One of the big reasons you shouldn't do this is because if you tamp at an angle like so, you compress too much coffee over this side and you leave too much up here, which means that when the water comes out of your shower head, it's not going to cover it properly and your extraction is going to be very uneven. You're going to have uh, essentially an under and an over extracted shot in the one go. And that's going to give you an incredibly horrible taste. Also, don't use the wrong body position. If you're putting too much strain on your wrists over a long period of time, you can get what they refer to as a RSI. It's a big thing when people are on desk jobs, moving their mouse around or when they're playing guitar. And it comes from keeping your wrists strained in a very bad position. Another thing that I see people doing is they'll grind up and they'll distribute, and they'll tamp, but they'll leave some ground coffee here. So a little habit I've gotten into is just cleaning it off with my hands. That saves oil buildup on the sides here, which clip in to your group bed. That is going to ensure that the life of your undercup washer, which is the rubber ring that holds your shower screen in place, is prolonged and it's also going to keep that group head nice and clean so the do's of coffee stabilize it on the bench so let's say my hand is the bench here keep it flat like that hold your handle keep the tamper dry as well make sure there's no big bodies of water sitting on the tamper because when you tamp it's going to grip it and the correct body position that i had learned in a roastery is to stand 90 degrees to the bench. So have your shoulders like this. And then from there, raise your foot up off the floor. And as you tamp, allow your body weight to push it down. That's going to save strain on your wrist. A common occurrence that you will see in cafes nowadays are automatic tampers, as well as their distribution tools. So automatic tampers is great for a couple of reasons. One, they save your wrist, they save you straining your wrist. And two, it ensures that the tamp is gonna be the exact same every time because everybody has a different level of strength and it's very, very hard to gauge that, especially when you've been doing it a while and you've already got your set routine of what you do. So the distribution tools that you get, the OCD is a great one. It ensures that you will have the right amount of coffee distributed around your basket however you should also be using your hand to distribute it as well avoid poking down try and move your hand over and let the coffee fall into place you can lightly tap it but try not to completely destroy it or tap it on the bench Tapping on the benches I have covered in a previous video, the worst way to make coffee will channel. So it will cause a crack in your puck, 
meaning the water will flow through without actually creating that beautiful coffee filter you're after. These are the do's and the don'ts of tamping your coffee. Tomorrow, I'm going to be going over milk. It's a topic that I've covered before, but there are a few points that I want to reiterate because you can never, never get this stuff drilled in enough. Like Milk's just one of those things that you constantly have to work out. There are other variables to focus on, and it's well beyond just the alternative milks I covered. This is going to be the technique in itself. Thank you.